and what is the name of the country where we are living in right now? What is this country? Are you citizens of this country? No. no. Well, we are strangers. This is not our country, this is not our home. And the word pilgrim means sojourning in a strange place. Okay? Sojourning in a strange place. Now in your program, you also see uh, a reference in Genesis chapter 26. I would like to use the story of uh, Isaac today for for the message. Now, Isaac was a man who lived in the shadow of his father, a great father. And he lived in the shadow of Jacob, his great son. He had a great father and he had a great son, but Isaac was a mediocre. He was an average Christian. If you will study your Bible, Matikita nyo, I think 14 chapters were devoted about the life of Abraham in the book of Genesis. And 12 or something chapters uh, na discuss ang buhay ni Jacob. Uh, so, ganun ka, ano yung, but it is only here in Genesis chapter 26 that we are allowed a glimpse into the life and work of this man. Only one chapter, Genesis chapter 26. Now, Isaac, if you study Genesis chapter 26, was a pilgrim. He was a stranger. He moved from place to place and not actually owning any of the land upon which he lived. He moved from one place to another. It was not his. He moved to another place. He, he, he did not own the place. And he moved from one place to another. He was a pilgrim. And katulad ni Isaac, like, like Isaac, we are pilgrims in this world. We are pilgrims in this world. Very clear, dito sa pinasa natin. Go back again, dun sa ating text, sa, uh, sa first Peter. The Bible very clear, clearly tells us, ang sabi dyan, sa first Peter, again, we read it several times earlier, but the Bible says in first Peter chapter 2 and verse 11, Dearly beloved, I beseech you, the Apostle Peter said, as strangers and pilgrims. We are simply strangers. We are pilgrims in this world. This world is not our home. Amen? Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. We have a song, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Amen? Amen. We are strangers, folks. This is not our home. This world is not our home. We are just a passing through. Amen? Amen. We are strangers in this world. We are pilgrims in this world. So if this world is not our home, and if we are simply strangers and pilgrims in this world, then what is our home? What is our home? Look at the Bible in Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 20. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 20. I was talking to my guy last night. I said, I said, what's your religion back home? He said, I'm a Christian. I said, a Catholic. And he said, yes. I said, do you know for sure that you will go to heaven when you die? He said, I'm not sure. Would you like to know? He said, yes. And so I explained to him the simple plan of salvation. And he believed in Jesus Christ as his Savior. Yeah. The Bible tells us, he is here this morning. And he brought his friends. Philippians chapter 3, verse number 20. Ang sabi ko ng Bible dito. For our conversation is in heaven. Our conversation is in heaven. From whence also 
We look for the Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at the Bible in 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 4 and 5. The Bible tells us, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in word, in heaven for you. Folks, you have an inheritance. Meron kang ari-arigan dun sa langit. Amen? Amen? If you are saved this morning, you have an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled and faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. Amen? amen. Can you say anything to that? Amen. Say, you have an inheritance. Maybe you are poor like me. You have no properties. You have no... In this world, it's all right. If you are saved, if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the Bible says that you have an inheritance reserved in heaven for you. Amen. And the Bible says who are kept by the power of God through faith and to salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Amen. So this world is not our home. We are strangers. We are pilgrims this world. And heaven is our own. Amen. Amen. If you are here this morning and you are not saved, I hope you will get saved this morning. There are, I told that guy last night, I said there are only two destiny, destinies. One is hell, the other is heaven. Purgatory is not in the Bible. Amen. Hello? Amen. It's not in the Bible. It's a man-made doctrine. It is not in the Bible. The Bible says, Entering at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and the broad is the way that leadeth to destruction that is hell. And many the demons go into hell. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few the be shall what? Find it. Folks, there are only two ways. It's either you go to heaven or you go to hell. You go to hell because you do not have Jesus in your heart. Your religion will not take you to heaven. Baptism will not take you to heaven. Sacraments will not take you to heaven. Nothing will take you to heaven except the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but by me. Amen. It is only through Jesus Christ. Not Baptist, not Catholic, not, not any other religion, not the pastor, not the priest, not the Pope, not many. We have set up all many times in this church. The only one that can take you to heaven. Is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know why it's Jesus? Because He was the one who died on the cross of Calvary and shed His precious blood. He was buried and He rose again on the third day. He paid for your sins and mine. Amen. That's why it's only Jesus Christ. Not Dr. Sarison, not, not anyone else. Only the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we are pilgrims. We are pilgrims in this world. Sometimes we going home. I don't know about you, but this world is not my home. You are looking at the guy who one day will take his flight to heaven. Amen. I don't know about you. But I'm not living this world forever. I have a home in heaven. Not because I'm a preacher. I have a home in heaven. Not because I'm good. Because I'm just a sinner like you. I have a home in heaven reserved for me because I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I am a pilgrim. I am a pilgrim. Three things about the pilgrim. First, I want you to see the provisions he experienced. I changed the outline just a little bit. The provisions that Isaac experienced. He was a pilgrim. He moved from one place to another. He did not own the place where he stayed. But you know what? Isaac experience the provisions of God. Hello? Amen. Look at your Bible in verse number 14 of Genesis. Verse number 12 down to verse number 14. Then Isaac, let's read the verse all together. Ready? Are you with me? Amen. Genesis 26. Turn to Genesis 26 and read with me. Okay, ready? This will not be a long sermon. Look at verse number 20. Verse number 12. Uh, number verse number 14. Genesis chapter 26. Ready to begin. Then Isaac sowed in the land 
and the seed in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man walked straight and went forward and grew until he became very great, for he had possessions of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants and the Philistines in Midian. And what did he do with Isaac? Isaac was blessed of God. He was a pilgrim. He moved from one place to another. But he was a man who was mightily blessed of God. Amen? Amen. You know why? You know, kapag binasa niyo yung story, ang nakatamang hap po dito, itong blessing po ni Isaac ay nangyari in the midst of famine. In the midst of famine. Do you understand famine? Scarcity. There was drought. In the midst of famine, Isaac enjoyed the blessings of God. Do you know why God blessed him? Are you looking at me? I'm asking you. Do you know why God blessed him? Do you know why God blessed him? Would you like to know? Yes. Would you listen if I tell you? Yes. Because this is also the secret of new blessings from God. Are you ready now? Yes. God blessed him because he was obedient. God blessed him because he was? Yes. I can hear it very well. I'm old. God blessed him because he was? Yes. God blessed him because he was? Obedient. Look at your Bible. Let's, let's, let's read the earlier verses. And there was a famine in the land. Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And probably when there was a famine, Isaac was thinking of going down to Egypt. Like his father did. Ano katulad mo ba? Walang wala ba? Ano iisipin mo? Ako, overtime muna ako. Di ba ano? Di ba ano? Bakit pa akong parang every time na nagigitip pa yun, ang unang naapit ko na yung ating relationship sa Panginoon. Hindi ba dapat na pag-gitip pa yun, doon tayo dapat lumapit sa Panginoon? There was a family in the land. And Isaac was thinking of going down to Egypt because that was exactly what his father did back in Genesis chapter 12 and verse number 10. And the Lord appeared to him. Tignan mo, ang in-intercept na mo yun. And said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. So join in this land and I will be with thee and will bless thee for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries and will perform the oath which I swear unto thy father Abraham, Abraham thy father and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and will give unto thy seed all these countries and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed Lord and verse 6 and Isaac dwelt in Gerar Ano sa akin ng Panginoon sa kanya? Isaac, huwag kang bumaba sa Egypt. Egypt is always a type of the world. God said, Isaac, don't go down to Egypt. Stay in this place and I will bless you. Isaac trusted God to mabag sa Panginoon. He obeyed God. And because he obeyed God, God blessed him. You see now why? Nakikita nyo na yung reason why God kung bakit tayo hindi bine-bless ng Panginoon din sa mga. If God is not, if you are not experiencing the blessing of God, it's not His fault. Hello? Do not blame God if you are not receiving His blessings. God wants to bless you. But the reason you are not enjoying the blessings of God is because we do not trust Him. We do not obey Him. Here is Isaac. There was famine in the land. He wants to go down to Egypt like his father said. But God said, hey, Isaac, stay here. I bless you. The Bible says, Deuteronomy chapter 20. Chapter 28. This is a long chapter. But I will not read all of it. 
that it is funny. Okay? This is just a little simple. Obeying the great commission. Obeying the commands of God. Marathi Jan. Ahinsara was blessed by God. He experienced the blessing of God because he obeyed God. Did you know that you cannot reinvent the wheel? Do you ride a bicycle? Do you ride a car? Say, say amen if you do. Amen. You know, what's the, how what is the shape of the, the wheel? Oh. Was there ever a time when it was rectangle? Was there ever a time when that was a square? No. no. Since the beginning of time, the wheel is round. Yeah. Until it's still round. One thousand years from now, it will still be round, right? Amen. Am I right? Amen. You cannot reinvent the wheel. There is no other formula for the blessings of God. You want this blessing? You already said, you must obey. Amen. Blessings or curse. It's okay. Which do you want? I have said before you this day, he said, a blessing and a curse. Blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord. But if not, then you ought to see curse. See, number one, the provisions he experienced. And number two, the problems he endured. He endured. Number one, yung mga provisions, yung mga pagpapanang natanggap niya isa, pinagpala sa naman yun, dahil sa ipasunurin sa Panginoon. So, balit hindi lang naman po puro pagpapala sa buhay niya isa, meron din po siyang mga problem, mga titin pinagdaanan. Amen? Amen? Not only provisions, but also problems. Look at verse number 14. Chapter 26, verse number 14. Look at that. He had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and great store of servants and the Philistines what? Invading him. Do you have somebody in your company who invade you? Sounds familiar? Makinigay mo mo puti ha? Meron ba kayong nararamdaman parang naiinggit sa inyo? Hindi lamang dito sa Qatar, may katrabaho nyo sa Pilipinas, may din neighbor mo. Wala ka namang ginawang kasalanan sa kanila. But they invade you because of who you are and because of what you have. Alam mo kung Christiano ka, you don't have to do anything wrong for people to be mad with you. Anong kasama mga gawa ng isang life in Egypt? But they were being persecuted simply because they were Israelites. And you would be persecuted simply because you were a child of God. Amen. You are not one of them. Say, and the Bible says in verse number 15, it is, For all the wells which his father's servants had dig in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. Yung mga bubong na kinukup ng tatay niya nung araw pa, alam niyo kasi yung water, kung nasa Simay Desert Place ka, that's a very important commodity. It is, is, it is almost as important as oil today. Are you with me? Parang nga rin may, parang nga rin may, may oil siya. Walang may ayon ng lupa no. Everything was God's place. So if you are in a place, you can raise a family, you have a well, that's your place. And for somebody, natambakan nila yung bubon mo, yung well, that is declaring war against you. Well, they, they fill those wells with dirt. And a bit let's say that why is go from us, for the Lord God's mighty of the way. And verse number 7, the eyes have departed thence, Umalis si Isaac punta sa malayo-layo and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerard and went there and Isaac dig well, dig again the wells of water which they had dig in the days of Abraham his father for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac servant dig in the valley and found their well of water is called of springing water. And the herdmen of Gerard did strike with Isaac's herdmen 
So if the water is ours, umalis din dyan, anin yan. Sino naghutay doon sa mga ng wells? Ano sa? And there was a water spring in the Bible says. Para ka kasi to me because that's what they would drink and their animals would drink from. And verse number 19 and Isaac 7D in the valley and powder a well of spring water. Verse number 20 and the earth men of Gerar did strike with it. Isaac's treatment saying the water is ours. And he called the name of the well Isaac. Because they stood with him and they digged another one and strove for the gods of and he called the name of that Sikna and he moved from this and digged another well and for that they strove now. Marami din pong pinagdaan ang problema si Isa. Ganyan ang buhay ng isang Christiano. That is the life of a Christian. You have provisions you experience but you will also have problems that you will endure. Amen? 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 Maybe your problem is different from Isaac's. And so, may mga problema tayo here today. Amen? Amen. You have no idea how many text messages, how many calls I get during the week. Tapos, when I need to go home to ano, I need money for ticket. Ano, ako ka tayo ito is? Ba't kayo ba na present sa tatwa mo na ako pa ng pambayad? Gusto mong sabihin yung dalaw, hindi ko kayong sabihin eh. So I have to find means and marami pong problem. So many problems. But that's life. Amen? Ano? Gusto niyo wala na yung problema? Sino dito gusto mo wala na yung problema? You want to know problems. Raise your hand. There is a solution. Come on, raise your hand. Oh, ayun eh. Okay? Sino sa iyo ayaw na ng problema? Sabihin niyo lang. Mag-pray tayo sa Pernod. Amen! Folks, maraming po tayo magdala ng problema. Amen? Amen! May mga purpose kasi yung Panginoon dyan eh. Kung gusto mong wala ka ng problema, magkulambu ka ng ano, ng, ng, ng Plymouth. Na six feet ang haba. Hindi na dalawin. Hindi na taas. Para ka ng problema ito, sigura din. But as a hindrance of problems, he endures some problems. Folks, we will have problems as we go through life. We will have problems. You know what I like about Isaac? Because he never stopped digging. He wanted to do something to win on the enemies. But you know what? He would never allow anyone to stop him from accomplishing what he wants to accomplish in life. Maraming nagtatalaman yun. Kahit sa ministry, he wants to start his program, may mga ayaw. Mga Christian, mo ba yan? But you just have to dig the well. You just have to keep digging. And keep digging. And keep digging. I can guarantee you that in your journey through this world, it will not come out without a fight. You will have problems in life. But the good thing is, when we go through problems in life, the Lord is still with us. If we are obedient to Him. The last point is this. First, is the provisions He experienced. And secondly, the problems He endured. And the last one is the privileges He enjoyed. I want you to see the privileges that He enjoyed. Look at verse number 23 down to 25. And he went up from thence to Beersheba. And the Lord, what? Sabihin niyo na yung word. And the Lord, what? Appeared unto him. The same night. And said, I am God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee, and will multiply thy seed for my servants, Abraham said. And he built it, an altar there, and called upon the name of the Lord, and pitched his tent there, and there as a servants they a well. Listen very well. Listen very well. Ang ganang dami. Pati niyo mga kapatid natin sa servant pag-ingin niyo nito. 
Now, in these last few verses of our text, we find that Isaac experienced the presence and the promises of God. Amen? Amen. He experienced the, the presence of God. The Bible says, And the Lord appeared unto him. The same night. And not only that the Lord appeared unto him, the Lord spoke unto him, Sabi ng Panginoon, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Nag-introduce ng Panginoon ang sabi niya. And then ang sabi niya, Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bless thee, and will multiply thy sin for my servant Abraham the son. Folks, listen to me. There is no greater privilege than that experiencing the Lord's presence and hearing His voice. Ulitin ko yan. There is no greater privilege. Walang mas malaking privilege pa. Walang mas malaking blessing pa than that of experiencing the presence and hearing His voice. That is the greatest privilege. Amen? 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 That is the best blessing. His presence. And to hear Him speak. Saan ang pipiliin mo sa dalawa? Which would you rather have? Money or the master? Maganda dito eh. Kaya sa tayo sa akin. Come and appear to Him. See? See? He enjoyed the privilege of God's presence. He enjoyed the privilege of God's promise. Turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 14. There is a sub story here. And let me just summarize the story. Genesis chapter 14. Makita natin dyan yung story about you know the story of love? Do you know the story of love? Love? Choose the place of Sodom. He did not do the time na ang Sodom ay merong kaaway. Visitor lovers. Well, he was in that city. And the enemies came and attacked Sodom and Gomorrah. They abducted many people from Sodom and Gomorrah. Kasama na rin sila at ang kanyang family. All of them were taken. Now, Abraham heard of what happened to Solomon and Gomorrah and to Lot, his nephew. And Abraham prayed to God and said, Lord, what must I do? Should I go after them? And God said, no. And Abraham organized his 318 servants and ran and went after the city of lovers and recovered everything. Do you see the point? Nakuha nila lahat. Nabawi nila lahat. Lahat and the people were back in Sodom. The king of Sodom got his people. He got all their victuals. Lahat ng mga yariyan nila na iba rin. And I want you to see Genesis chapter 15 right now. Everybody was happy. Lahat was happy. Buo ang family. Every member of the family were there. No casualties. Lahat ng mga gamit nila na ibalitin. The king of Sodom and the people of Sodom were, were very happy. Thanks to Abraham. Pero si Abraham, ano na pala niya? He was tired. He was exhausted. Tignan niyo yung chapter 14. And Abraham said to the king, verse number 22 of Sodom, I have lifted up my eyes, hands unto the Lord, the Most High God, the Possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from thee a thread, even as you love that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abraham rich. Binabayaran sa niya, binibigyan sa ng hari, ng love gift. Masama ba yung tumanggap ka ng love gift? Hindi masama yun. Kaso kay Abraham, before siya pumunta doon, nangako siya sa Panginoon, sabi niya, Lord, I will run after them, Panginoon, wala ako akong tatanggapin, wala akong kukunin sa kanya. There was nothing wrong with receiving those love gifts, 
But the problem was, he made a promise to God that he would not receive anything. And he kept his promise. Amen? Verse number 24, saying, Only that which the young men have eaten. Yung kinahinan ng mga tao, yung natural. Kasi kailangan nilang gumain, and the portion of the men which went with me, honor is called and mumbled, and let them take their portion. Everything got what they wanted in, in that situation. But Abraham, then look at verse number 15. Abraham was by himself. And so it was after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Amen? Amen. God comforted the heart of Abraham. He was tired. He was exhausted from the fire. Everyone got what they uh, what they own. Abraham, ano nakuha niya? At that point, wala. Wala sa reward. Napapu lang siya. But God said, Abraham, Abraham, you have me. Abraham, you have me. He experienced the presence of God. And he experienced the promise of God in his life. And you know, you know, Isaac, Isaac prepared an altar and went before his God and worshipped God. This is the privilege enjoyed by those who know the Lord. Folks, are you enjoying the presence of God? May you enjoy the presence of God? Do you enjoy God speaking to you? Kasi kung nai-enjoy ko talaga ang Panginoon, there is no reason you will not come to church. Hindi ko manawaan minsan, bakit may mga Christian mo kaya? Langan yung text mo kaya, langan yung tawalan mo, for them to be able to come to church. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. I am excited to come in from Friday. You know what? Because I have a chance to hear from God again. That is the life of a pilgrim. We have provisions that we experience because we obey God. We have problems that we endure because we are serving God. But rest assured that something of my own, I will be with thee. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen? Amen. And we have privilege to enjoy. And that is the presence of God and the promises of God. Let us keep marching on. Let us keep heading towards that city that captured the hearts of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. One day we will take our last pondering step down here and we will set foot on the shores of home. One day we will be home. Amen? Amen. While we are here in this world, let us believe that we to live for God. We are pilgrims here, but one day we are going home. Amen? Amen. That is the life of a Christian, the life of a stranger, and the life of a pilgrim. Now, we have Father, we thank you for the message Lord you gave us today. Lord, I pray that you will help us to realize today that as your children, there are provisions that we can experience if only we are obedient to you, God. That there are problems also we will encounter, but we take comfort that you will always be with us. You promise never to leave us nor forsake us and that are privileges that we will enjoy in life. Many privileges, the privilege of hearing your word, the privilege of worshiping you, the privilege of water, which is prayer, but most of all, the privilege of having your presence and hearing from you your promises. Lord, I pray that you will help us to be faithful, help us, Lord, to be determined to live for you. Bless the invitation in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will every hand up out and eyes have closed? No one will be around. Let me just ask you one question. Did God speak to your heart today? You are a pilgrim. I am a pilgrim. There are provisions. And there are problems. And there are privileges in our Christian life. Will every hand up out and eyes have closed? No one will be around. Who will raise their hand this morning along with mine? And say, Pastor, please pray for me, God. Spoke to my heart. Praise God, let me say. 
and uh, thank you for listening so well and uh, let me ask uh, Brother Marino to this song and sing this song and remember that Brother Marino is not only a preacher, he is not only a teacher, he is not only a singer he is a sports figure did you know that he, he was a football player for the Navy before? I said, I said, this man not And when he plays defense, he plays defense. I will not be surprised if he plays karate and judo or not anymore. Okay. You move in uh, I like this one because he loves the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, uh, okay. uh, make sure you give to the Lord. But if not, you will tithe something on and also the offerings. Uh, Brother Pat, you prayed earlier. And uh, you're the program. Brother Elmi, could you please come? Thank you. You have in. You have to close the prayer, you Tradition, tradition of Anglia. Of Premium of Anglia. You want to move on? You want to move on? You want to move on? And the very important thing of Anglia. And also, you can meet them card. Say no, you can meet them card. Please drop it in the offering basket. If you don't have to meet them card, please put it in the offering basket. If you don't have to meet them card, ask one from the other. Thank you for being thankful to us and uh, we bring back all the glory and praise in Christ's precious name. 